It's Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. Here's Jeff Parles. We're live after being live not that long ago at Sports by the Book here at the South Point Studio. I'm Jeff Parles. we got a full boat here today. Alex White to my direct right. Matt Neverett on the far end of the desk. Uh, do we need to move Chris closer to me, Ann? Yep, Chris, you're gonna we're gonna okay. have to tighten up. Unfortunately, pretend like you like Jeff. Yeah, I know, and not, not, not many people do. Uh, Chris Chris Andrews is next to me. We'll have him in a second. Uh, we did our mayhem auction before. It was mayhem. I can tell you that. Uh, we'll go through those. We'll go through that later in the program. Uh, Alex White attempted to cheat, which is uh, all you could ask for. Uh, which whatever it is what it is. Uh, she'll use the excuse Chris, that she, you know that's not true. She, she's going to use the ex, she's going to use the excuse that she was busy doing other things in the middle of it. But she attempted to cheat. Matt never agrees with me on that. I never. Don't you put those words in my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> don't you put the evil on me, Ricky Bobby? For the record, I bid on Duke with sixteen dollars, and I had exactly sixteen dollars left and won at that price. And then I was out of money, and that's when we figured out I had hit my you, hundred you were too much. with only six teams. Oh, you ended up with. But with, I didn't go over. You so did that's not. That's pretty impressive because I didn't even know where I was. Yeah, and but I you was also going big on Duke. You also only did it in six teams, though. So. That's right. It's uh, hard to do. We'll go he's through a, it later. He's mad because he only spent ninety dollars and he had a hundred. Yeah. So well, whose I, fault is no, that? No, I'm not. I'm not yeah. saying. I'm, I'm not saying I'm guilt free. <laughs> I'm saying I'm guilt free. It's like the military. You know, when they give you the budget, you got to spend every penny of that. Or yeah. Else they won't no, give it's it, true. Yeah. Give it as and then they don't give year. you it again next year. Exactly. Or any federal agency, basically. <laughs> Chris, hey. it's been a busy day. Yeah. After yesterday's busy day. Yep. So in front of me, I'll pick him up. I have this sheet right here is the regions sheet, including the conference to win the national championship, which mm-hmm. right now uh, the favorite, you have the big 12 as the favorite. On Not the anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, did the betters, the betters yeah, uh, the take, East. they, 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 took the U- they wanted East. UConn, yeah. Yeah. even with and three teams. And the other teams. two, you know, yeah. I mean, but, you know, Marquette, I think is pretty live. Creighton's live. Yeah, Creighton's certainly live too. So yeah, that was, that was a good bet on their part. And then the futures, every team in the field available now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't have uh, any more field bets except for the no. earlier in the year ones. Right. Uh, and then the seed to win the national championship. Right. Has anyone hit that? And minus 140 on the ones right now. Uh, nobody's hit that yet. Okay. You know, uh, in the past, remember when UCLA, what was that, a couple years ago made a big run? 11. As, what were they in 11? Yeah. 11. Yeah. Oh, man, we were sweating that one. I had that a little too high that year. <laughs> so I've, I've toned it down a little bit on the field uh, or on the 6 through 11 seeds. Yeah, it's an interesting proposition. This year feels like the kind of year that, based on the regular season we had, that it it could potentially be a team that high. In in my eyes, it's going to be one through three. I could be wrong, yeah. but it just feels like after such a, a parity-driven regular season that that's the kind of tournament that we're going to have all of a sudden, all, all the chalk in the Final Four. I, I think the, the Final Four is going to be very chalky. You know, I, I figured out my... I, I did my bracket, you know, just to send to my daughter. She loves to play. And uh, I put Kentucky in the Final Four. What do they have, three seeds? Three. Yep. That's as deep as I went as far as seeds go. But I think I think the Final Four is going to be pretty chalky. But I think in the middle rounds, you're going to see a lot of upsets. Yeah, you because know, I think a lot of teams are pretty evenly matched. Well, the one interesting thing with the bid steals, it did weaken mm. It did weaken some of the seeding around. Uh, you end up with, I mean, Drake ends up as a 10 seed. They probably were heading for... In 11, if chalk prevailed in the last week, uh, James Madison died, was a 12, which was a little bit surprising. I thought that they could have come in a little bit better. Uh, but, a- again, it's been a roundabout year in college hoops. Yeah. But with that said, I mean, UConn sitting there at 4-1, to one, they're the number one overall seed. They didn't get the greatest of draws. They might have they to, line, tough draw. they have to yes. line up with a, a really yeah. good four in Auburn, potentially. Yes. And then the Big 12 champion, Iowa State, if they were to get there, or the Big 10 champion, Illinois, yeah. in, the, in the regional final. But you know what? It still doesn't matter. Uh, they're still the betting favorite. They're four to one. Yeah. And I will say, though, the price on UConn, I was not expecting to get, I'm not expecting to get a price, at least going into yesterday, that, okay, you're probably going to mm-hmm. have to lay a price on a UConn future. Uh, to win the East, but because of the nature of that bracket, you posted a plus 110 on yeah. UConn to come out of that region, even though they play in Brooklyn and Boston. Yeah, I mean, I think Auburn is really live. They're good. You know, Iowa State, I'm not sure they're good enough to beat UConn. But, I mean, give them credit. I mean, they played 
that Big 12 schedule, <laughs> you, you, only, you may get many breaks along the way there. So they're pretty battle-tested. Uh, who's the fourth team in the, that? Uh, Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> okay. Illinois is a three. Another one. You don't get yeah. too many breaks in the Big Ten either. You know, so I think Illinois is kind of a grinder team. You know, I think they probably uh, have a real close game with Connecticut if, if they play. The one thing from a uh, logistics standpoint for the Huskies, they don't have to get on an airplane until right. the Final Four. Yeah. they yeah. got to drive from stores to Brooklyn, Brooklyn to Boston if they keep on winning, and then to Phoenix for the Final Four. But it's going to be an easy road as far as that's concerned. But as far as the teams mm-hmm. they play, yeah, certainly a really tough road for number yeah. one UConn. Listen, I'm looking at my sheet. I picked them to win it all. Yeah, yeah. they I could. Try. I and think they're the best it. team. The yeah. best team obviously doesn't always win, but I think they are the best team. Um, but, I th- you know, they got a tough road. But, uh, listen, I-, I-, I say this every year. The seedings are overrated. you got to go out and win a game. you got to go out and win. You know, and uh, that that's what it comes down to. And everybody you play is going to be tough. And I always say the one seed always has a, a tough second-round game. You play the 8-9 winner. And the two seed always has a tough game. You play the 7-10 winner. Now, sometimes you get three, four, five. You can get some upsets along the way. And sometimes those lower seeds wind up, um, you know, Getting a break, they got to make their own breaks too. But I mean, they get a break by playing a lower seed, and, and that gives them a theoretical easier path. But you know, the one and two seeds, you're always going to have a tough game that second round, and you can get beaten that second round. It happens. I do want to ask you guys: Do you think we're a little bit biased with UConn, especially because we just saw Houston and Purdue lose their conference championships? Because as I was making my bracket, I, that kind of did cross my mind. Because I mean, before Houston lost that game to Iowa State, they were very close mm-hmm. to UConn in most people's power ratings, and I just wonder if uh, maybe they needed that loss, and now they can turn the flip the switch and make a big run here. They almost give up in that game a little bit once they saw they weren't going to win and just, you know, Samson put his guys on the bench and, you know, just maybe wasn't trying. So I I think that's what happened myself. Oh, and it's interesting to, to take a look because on the one side, every national champion but one since 2000 has at least made their conference's semifinal round. So that's something to keep they in mind all, as well. They all got there, all three one seeds. Um, but all this, four is, one seeds. this is a weird year because there were 18 number one seeds in their conference tournament that did not even reach the final, let alone win it. So it, it was a lot of... Uh, upsets in those conference tournaments. Um, and it, it all depends. I would say you got to go conference by conference. It all depends on how much stock you put into, you know, winning the Big 12, which for me, not that much, especially for a team like Houston that was really good. They're defensively oriented. That's not going to change at all. They've got the players. They've got the depth. They've got the coaching. And the Big 12, the deepest conference in the country at the top, it's not going to be as easy as it is for, you know, say Purdue to win the Big, the Big 10. I take a lot more stock in you know, a team winning the Big Ten where there's a little, little bit more parity than the Big 12 where it's like, you know, all these teams are all really, really good. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Dickie V, I thought, had a really good point. This one is a little editorial thing. He <laughs> Go said, for it. Well, he said, you know, the, the these mediocre power, power conference teams, they get chance after chance after chance. Whereas, like, these lower, uh, you know, mid-major and below, you got one chance. And, and the first team that came to my mind was Indiana State. But I'd love to see them in there. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they win a first round game or not. But he is right. And I think that you know, I listen, the tournament is great. And guys are asking me last night, you know, Rob Me, she was talked to both of us, you know, would you like to seed the tournament? I said, no. <laughs> uh, let them seed it. We'll make the numbers. But the one thing I would say the that would make the tournament better is some of these regular season conference uh winners out of some of these smaller conferences getting the automatic bid. And then you can play for another bid. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how it worked, to be perfectly honest. But I think that's really the drama in the the tournament. Like, let's say, you know, I don't know. I mean, pick like a team, a team that I really even kind of like, like a Texas Tech. You know, if they win a game or two, that's not going to really light the bulb. You know what I mean? That, no. Nothing's going to, you know, that, okay, that's nice. Yeah. But if like, you know, James Madison I'm talking, or, you know, Indiana State or somebody like that, you know, go back, you know, uh, you know, when Coppin State won a couple of games, and even when that that Valparaiso team, St. Uh, Peter, St. Peter's in the Elite Eight is yeah. a 15 two years ago. Yeah, I mean, those yeah. are the things that really make the tournament great, and we're eliminating a lot of those teams. I think unnecessarily. You know, if you go through the whole year and win your conference, I think that should mean something rather than yeah. having a bad three or four. Days. Well, well, I'll give credit to a few leagues, even though it didn't work out for the Big West, where Long Beach fires Dan Munson and somehow yeah. wins the conference tournament anyway. Team of Destiny. Uh, but, yeah. but. I, a lot of conferences here in, in Vegas, the WCC's done it forever, where they give the one and the two seed a bye to the semifinals, which is a huge advantage in your yeah. conference tournament. The WAC does it now. 
we saw Grand Canyon. We saw Chuck prevail mm-hmm. in that conference. And Grand Canyon, I think, is a pretty live dog as a 12 seed against St. Mary's. See, I tied it all back to Vegas. So. There we go. But it, it, I think more of these smaller conference tournaments and a lot of it, look, a lot of these conf- the conference tournaments aren't going anywhere because no, most, of the, most of these small conferences make like 70% of their basketball revenue on that mm-hmm. week. Oh, yeah. So how do you make it more fair to protect your regular season champions? I think all these one-bid leagues got to go with, with – you can all right, you can put eight teams in the conference tournament, but those one and two seeds deserve every advantage or your one seed as big of an advantage as humanly possible. WCC's done it forever. I think that's a, a lot great of these idea. other these conferences too. are starting to do it that's as well. That's a terrific idea. Yeah, it, I it, really this, like that. this was the first year of the Big West doing that uh, the, the double buy into the semis, yep. and lo and behold, they ended up with seeds one through four in the in the semifinal games. And mm-hmm. it turns out that the four seed ended up winning, right. but right. there's a little bit of intrinsic motivation Which there from the. Uh, at, uh, he was at the Big West. I was doing West, just, yeah. just literally just about every game in that you tournament. Can still talk uh, somehow, <laughs> somewhere. He's fighting through. I'm playing hero ball this week, Chris. So. I want to actually go back to the question you asked yeah. about UConn. It doesn't change anything for me what happened last week because they were number one in my ratings oh, were they? before they're, last week, yeah. and they are still number one right yeah, now. me too. So it didn't yeah. really change much for me. Yeah, I had a neck and neck with Houston. Yeah, no, look, Very Houston, close. Purdue, close. I, I would even – the fourth number one, I – Kind of, it's, it's kind of weird where it's a blue blood of blue bloods. It's the fourth number yeah. one seed in North Carolina – and they just are seemingly forgotten in the mix here because everyone has had their eyeballs on UConn, the three-horse race for the number one overall seed, UConn, Purdue, and Houston all year. But there's North Carolina as a one seed and honestly a pretty favorable draw yeah, because did. of the West. I mean, I don't – you ended up with Arizona in the draft. I, You know my thoughts on, on the Wildcats. I think they're immensely talented but poorly coached. I think they have a nice draw. They have a good draw, too. Here in this I picked region, them to go to the Final Four. I so, did, so, so that's the bottom of the West you see on your screen right now. Baylor, talented. Yeah. National champion pedigree. We went out this year. Yeah. yeah. They had a bunch of injuries mid-year yeah. as well. They finished hot, though. They, fin- they finished yeah. well other than that lost to Iowa State yeah. in, uh, in Ames South and KC. I mean, New Mexico, we talked about it yesterday. New Mexico's a favorite as an 11 seed against a 6 seed. By the way, the 6 seed at Clemson Tigers were one of the cheapest teams to go today to Frank Nicotero. I can see why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I've got to, so I pull in the valet. I always valet. And I, who do you like? Who do you like? This is Saturday. Who do you like to win it all? Who do you like to win it all? Uh, I don't know. I said, I'll take a shot with North Carolina. They lose that night. Yeah. <laughs> and they got wired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially in the second. They last yeah. 10 minutes. Um, but um, just go into these numbers real quick that, that you have out there. Obviously, yeah. uh, the other prop bets within the games will come out closer to oh, game yeah. time. Of course, you're going to do first to 15 oh, again, God, yeah. which is America's favorite bet. Oh, Let's be yeah. real with ourselves, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it's our favorite bet, too, Jeff. Yeah. You see these guys going nuts. It's fantastic. Well, it's, it's uh, again, as we've said, again, the, show, the daily plug, the best party in Vegas – for the first three days of the tournament, yeah. is upstairs yeah. uh, at the party here at the South Point. Free parking, as always. Free entry. Get he- get here by about 745 yeah. when the doors bargain open at food. 8. Yep. Bargain food. We don't try to milk yep. you on the food. You know? uh, there you go. The most massive p- madness party in Vegas. That's true. 21st, true. 22nd, 23rd upstairs. Yeah. All of us will be up there in I some capacity that. throughout the week. We have, uh, I think we have... I think this year we're going to have eight or nine ticket writers awesome. for Kia. Wow. Awesome. And, and we have somebody at the table to uh, register uh, people with the app. Oh, very good. I'm going to beg you. Don't do that today. <laughs> do, do, it, do it on we'll, Tuesday. We have somebody to accommodate you because I know people are going to do it. But we'd rather you come in on Tuesday or Wednesday to get the app. I also just love all the legal meandering that that books and people that do contests and stuff have to do to get around the uh, the oh, copyright yeah. infringement. I know. You know, you'll see so uh, you know, the, the the crazy party third month of the year. Yeah. Like you got to find ways to say March Madness. It isn't March Madness. Yeah, I know. It's it's just and the same we go through the same thing with the Super Bowl. It's just ridiculous. exactly. Yeah. Hey, but the best way to uh, not get sued is to uh, just be creative. Yeah, that's why we hired lawyers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm dressed like one, but I certainly yeah, am not one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Chris, before we let, let you get back to work, uh, of course, first four games start tomorrow. Mm-hmm. As we've talked about on this show, the first game of the tournament is one of the more bet games of the entire week so far. Unbelievable. With a favorite flip from Wagner favored when yeah. you open to Howard now favored. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we all get to enjoy Virginia playing basketball. Funny, I was talking to my wife. She said, those games aren't very big on Tuesday. 
Really? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see some of the action? We flipped favorites. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got a lot of money on this game. I'm going to be sweating pretty good. Yeah. Well, you said probably by the, by the, I would imagine by game time, you'll be pretty well balanced on that game. Yeah, as long as, yeah, I mean, we'll be avoiding numbers, you know, yeah. but I, and I think it, it is one of those games going to come down to, you know, maybe, maybe a, a shot at the buzzer. I hope it doesn't because we're a little vulnerable uh, one or two either way. But, uh, you know, listen, that's, that's bookmaking. You know, we, it, well, I always say the bookmakers are the biggest whiners in the world. You know, so <laughs> try not to fit into that too much, but I know I do. You, you haven't met radio hosts, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've met a few. <laughs> Chris, always a pleasure. By the way. Uh, yes. we got baseball coming up. Yeah. I, 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 we've, Three o'clock in the morning. Are you going to be up? Went, you're no. going to be up for it? No. No. You're Wednesday sure? morning, I guess. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Yeah. Seoul, South yeah. Korea for the yeah. Dodgers and the Padres. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, actually, that's a good PSA to throw out there. If you like the Dodgers or Padres season win total, come in before those games yeah. start to bet them. <laughs> and listen, we, I had them put it on. Well, it won't be on the these advertisements. When we get to the Sweet 16, we use minus 105 yes. on all the yep. games. Sweet 16. Yep. I said, can you put a little tag at the bottom? We've got the best baseball line in town. And we do. We've got the best baseball line in town. We use a dime line higher than anybody. We've got the best baseball line in time. So, put... So if you're looking for a good baseball line, come and we do. A, I got to tell you, really, it's amazing at the end of the year when you look at our baseball handle overall. We've got really easily accessible parking into the. You know, we don't charge it for all that. You know, our baseball handle is really, really, really strong. And it'll start tomorrow night, or is it tomorrow night? It is tomorrow night, Wednesday morning, tomorrow night, whatever, Wednesday whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, three a.m. Yeah. Right now, the Dodgers. Uh, on the win total, 103 and a half. And the Padres open 82, now down to 81. You're taking action on the under? I guess so. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> I've been busy with some other stuff. There's some other things yeah. going on. I will say, I, I always do uh, I always do five win totals a year. I've oh. gone three and two the last four or five years at least. So okay. I've got I've got three or four that I I got three that I really like, one that I am I going to take. The number. Tell me what you like. Let's see. <laughs> the, the the three that I'm locked in on that I'm going to take are Pirates over 75. I think I do like that. They uh, they won 74 last year. I think they're at least one game better. Yeah. Uh, the Giants over 81. I think they have a winning I record like with too. a lot of the additions that they've made. And yeah. then Red Sox under 78, which pains me because that was my childhood team. Yeah. Team I've always rooted for. I think they are going to be atrocious this year. Well, if they treat the Red Sox. The way they've treated the Penguins, they're yeah. probably right. The ownership group I'm talking about. Yeah. And I'm afraid uh, you might be onto something. There, yeah. Buddy. It's going to be Rafi Devers and a bunch of uh, quadruple A guys. Costas, Tr- Tristan Costas is in there as well, but the pitching is uh, leaves a lot to be desired. We might as well have already penciled Jordan Montgomery into a Red Sox jersey. I don't think that's enough. Okay. All right, I'm going to leave and walk in front yeah, of the please, camera. Yeah, please, please. Well, actually, actually, Alex actually requested a break when this happened. So oh, we're going to take, okay. a, we're gonna take a break. I am in the Jimmy Vaccaro. You, yeah. yeah. you are contractually obligated to do it. Uh, when we come back, we're going we're gonna to start, start looking more in-depth, maybe ha- help you with your bracket pools, maybe help you with a little future bet here or there. We'll go through all of it. Sports by the Book, South Point Studio. South Point offers all the types of entertainment you'd expect at a first-class Las Vegas resort. Did you know our 400-seat showroom is one of Las Vegas' top destinations for live entertainment? Enjoy live performances by classic Vegas entertainers, bands, and today's hottest comedians, plus a rock and dance floor. You can also enjoy live entertainment at the Grand View Lounge, where you'll feel all the vibes of old Las Vegas. Enjoy the music, and if you love to laugh, don't miss The Dirty at 1230, our very own free comedy show, every Friday night at 12.30 a.m. in the Grandview Lounge. The Dirty is 100% free, so arrive early. Go to southpointcasino.com or call the box office at 77136 for today's performances at the showroom and the Grandview Lounge. When you're ready for your favorite cocktail, stop in and unwind at one of our seven specialty lounges. There's a bar around every corner, because you're in Vegas, baby. South Point Casino has plenty of attractions for the whole family. Catch a movie. Our 16-screen movie theater includes two XD extreme screens for the ultimate in viewing, sound, and luxury. After the show, treat the family to a variety of treats at our old-fashioned ice cream parlor, Kate's Corner. We scoop up a variety of creamy concoctions, including smoothies, hand-dipped cones, milkshakes, malts, sodas, and sundaes. At Kate's, there's something for everyone. And if you've still got time to spare, our bowling center might be right up your alley. 
voted Best of Las Vegas. It's a great place for friends and family fun. 64 lanes, a pro shop, snack bar, and arcade. And while the kids are bowling, you can play slots and sip on a drink in the Alley Cat Lounge while overlooking the lanes. For our more serious and professional bowlers, the South Point is also home to a separate tournament bowling plaza. Whoops. Welcome back in South Point Studio. No, I need that. <laughs> I did too. I thought you were throwing it to me. No, no, you got you got whatever's going oh, on with that you. pen right there. That's my pen. Uh, Alex White, Matt <laughs> Neverett's here. <laughs> Chris Andrews, as always, always awesome to see him. We'll see uh, throughout the week. So, just so we have our schedule in line for everyone who's out there watching right now, Matt and Alex are here tomorrow. Jim Root will join the show. Yep. Wednesday, I will be here. Danny Burke will join the show, and Rob Mish will also join the show as well. There's a very nice article on the, on. Uh, Alex and and Vinny and Chris and uh, Tony Sinisi who helped who were the quartet that got the numbers ready to go first in Nevada here uh, at the South Point. Alex is moving lines both both in front of and behind the counter nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wish I I wish, all I could say if I was not on the air I would have bet with the world with Howard in that uh, Howard Wagner. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Chris, but uh, uh, there we go. All right, so let's let's go through this. Let's go region by region. Uh, you know what? To make life easy on on our friend Ann back there, we will actually start in the bottom right of the bracket because the Midwest is up. So let's start with the Midwest. Uh, we, could, we can get the top of the bracket first here for the Midwest region. Purdue is the number one seed. They are the three overall seeds. So we're doing this a little bit different than usual. We're in the bottom right quadrant. If you have a bracket at home, Purdue uh, will take on the winner of the Montana State Grambling Playing game on Wednesday. They they will play on uh, on Friday in Indianapolis. Uh, Utah State TCU. You're uh, eight nine TCU favored as a nine seed in that game. Three right now on this one here at the South Point again. TCU kind of muddled their way through conference play. They had the big win against Houston that really really made them avoid Dayton and maybe even avoided a worse fate like Oklahoma. Yeah. In the end. Uh, Gonzaga, six-point favorites against McNeese in the 5-12. And then Kansas, the number is up. And there was a, a little bit of a, a delay on that number because of the unknown nature of Kevin McCuller and Hunter Dickinson, who did not play in Kansas City last week. Uh, seven and a half on this one with Samford. So looking at this from a bracket perspective, more so than a betting perspective quickly here, Purdue did pretty well, all things considered. I think an 8-9 matchup where... If the eight seed Utah State pulls the betting upset, but not the seed upset here, I cannot think of a better matchup for Purdue, where Utah State's best player is a big yep. who is well, it's very hard to have anyone as big as Zach Eady. But uh, I think they will struggle to score in that game if it's Utah State. TCU actually has a pretty nice roster, Matt, in order to stay with Purdue in a potential round of 32. But they have just been so wildly inconsistent all year. Yeah, top to bottom. And, I mean, we were talking off the air before we even came on the show, and without a buzzer-beater win against Georgetown in the non-con, they may not have even snuck into the tournament Very at all. Possible. I mean, possible, they were, they're yeah. probably the worst of the Big 12 teams to sneak their way in. But for Utah State, yeah, great Osibor, the big you're thinking about. It's going to be a... a Unique matchup going against Zach Eady, as it always is. And Osibor, really good at staying out of foul trouble, which is something that Zach Eady is always really good at drawing his opponents into, is those those silly ticky-tack fouls. Early on in the game, when he's got his uh, you know number one opponent with three fouls in the first half against him, he always has the advantage against the backup bigs. Uh, I think in a potential matchup against Utah State, because in my bracket I have Utah State over TCU, uh, Darius Brown the second is going to be the name to watch out for. He is the secondary scoring option for the Aggies, and... Danny Sprinkle, great recruiter, first-year head coach. This is a Utah State team that returned this many points from last year's team. That's Zero. An incredible job by Sprinkle. It is. No, no Zero arguing that. For those listening and not watching. Um, I Purdue, I have winning that matchup, but I do think that uh, Utah State will get by TCU. If, if Darius Brown, though, goes off and is able to shoot his way from the outside against Purdue in that round of 32, I, I could see Utah State pulling up a third or a fourth straight year for Purdue on a uh, big-time upset. Wow, that's impressive. I actually have TCU beating Utah State. Um, I actually, I'm pretty high on the Mountain West, but the, I had to be careful and pick a couple, and I do think TCU can get this get this first win here. So we, we talked about this a little bit 
yesterday. Uh, Utah State, I look, the Mountain West, the people are upset with the seeding. I, I think the only team that has a legitimate gripe is New Mexico. Yeah, oh, fair, I, very I, much I think so. they have a legitimate gripe. Uh, their metrics were good. They won the conference tournament. In the hardest conference in the country to win. Only in, in my, in, as far as parity top to bottom, there were seven teams at under 7-1 to one to win that conference before the tournament started. That was the only team conference in the country even close to that mark. Biased. That, no, a little bit. No, you're not point. wrong. A little part. biased. But, but you're a little biased. Um, <laughs> numbers don't lie. The odds were, yeah, the the odds were tight. Thing. The odds were tight. I, I'll give you that, but biased. I'm going to go with that. A little bit. Uh, but for me, Utah State, they were the number one seed yeah. in the conference tournament. But I had them power rated as the fifth of the six in the, in the NCAA tournament for the Mountain West. I'm with Alex. I like TCU. I did not advance TCU in my bracket past Purdue because of the inconsistencies that the Horned Frogs have had. But look, for Purdue, you can't be losing to a 16 seed for the second straight year. I would be floored if it happens again. Mm -hmm. Because, the again, Montana State, we talked about a little bit yesterday, not as bad as the record is. They kind of are in this game just because they had a mediocre record. If Grambling beats Montana State, Purdue should be doing cartwheels because they'll be yeah. Grambling by 35. Yeah. Uh, but – I don't see Purdue losing to either of these eight nines. TCU would be a scarier opponent based off the way Utah State plays. We also saw TCU two years ago very close to KOing Arizona in a similar situation. Arizona bailed themselves out at the end of the game and then promptly was destroyed by Houston. Going to the lower portion of this upper portion uh, of the Midwest, uh, Salt Lake City games on Thursday. Let's start with Gonzaga. I thought they were overseeded by two lines at a minimum here. They take on McNeese, who is 30-3. and three. Their metrics are good. Their non-con schedule is a joke for the most part, except for two or three games mixed in there. They steamroll through the Southland easily. And I'm happy they're here because they're really good. And this is a team that is long. And Will Wade, we know, is a high major coach. who is coaching there because of the NCAA chicanery he had at LSU. Yeah. McNeese is very much live to win this game. And I agree. So very much live to win the next game against either Kansas or Samford. I like McNeese outright. I don't think Gonzaga, this is not your your old school Gonzaga team. I know they're on, Big what is this would be their ninth straight Sweet 16? Something like that, if yeah. They, if they made it through, which is unbelievable for any school. Wow. But, I mean, again, what Mark Few has done at Gonzaga I, is remarkable for what that's – the size of that school and the location of that school and the conference that school is in, it's remarkable what he's done. This is the worst team he's had in a very long time, and I think they go out early. I like McNeese outright in this game and advanced him in my bracket. And there, there's nobody in the WCC that plays as aggressively as McNeese State. There, there, just, there just isn't outside of Gonzaga, so it'll be a, a unique matchup, a well-coached team for McNeese State. They allow – the number one most amount of jump shots against in the country of any team. But Gonzaga is a team that doesn't take a lot of jump shots. They are in the paint. They do a lot of layups. They do a great job at getting to the line. That's where McNeese State is even better. They are phenomenal at getting to the free throw line, drawing fouls. And for Gonzaga, it's going to be about Graham E.K. If Graham E.K. is able to post up and dominate and work through around over under double teams, that's going to be the, the, the key factor is if – He's going to be able to distribute enough and be aggressive enough on his end to either you know have a big 20, even 30-point game. I could see Graham A.K. really, really having a big night in this game. Uh, but if he is able to do that as well as distribute a little bit and Zaga knocks down enough jump shots, I could see them uh, winning a close one. I, I think this is going to be close either way. But this McNeese State team is a really big matchup problem for a lot of teams in the country. Alex, we talk about pace all the time here on this show. And McNeese... Forget the offensive numbers real quick. The defensive numbers, they yes. make you work on offense to Matt's point of the jump shots. They make you take bad jump shots. It's a reason that actually <laughs> they, they're they 362nd in the country of three-point percentage amount of the field goals attempted by the opponent, which means the opponent shoots more threes, uh, almost more threes than two. 48% of the opponent's shots this year were three-point attempts against them which is a wild number. Usually the teams are in about the mid-30s. Uh, but we talk about pace. McNeese wants you to take time and take bad shots against their defense. And this is, look, Gonzaga team in the past would have destroyed this team because they were great from three-point range. They were great. They were they're great breaking you down. Yeah, this Gonzaga team is still really good from two, like Matt said. They're, 90, they're 92nd in the country from three, which, Alex, that's – Solid, but not probably not good enough. But keep in mind, Alex, it is on the 309th 
least or 309th amount of three point attempts. So it's not yeah. huge, huge volume. Correct. They are relatively efficient, though, when they do get those looks. I know. This is a very tough matchup, a bad draw for them. But it's not a, a 5 12 that I'm picking as an upset. Okay. I think Gonzaga will win this one. And, you know, you were on them for the conference championship. They lost that one to St. Mary's. And I think that's just going to help them be even more motivated in this tournament. The last time they lost to St. Mary's, we saw them go on that 10 win run and they beat Kentucky in that in that run so I think they'll be ready for this game I do think they are a little bit underrated because we saw them struggle so much in non-con so I'm going to trust Mark Few here and at least to get past this first game maybe even the second one I do have a question for both of you guys since they were 0-12-5 upsets last year does that factor into the handicap at all for this year you would assume that one would pull it out is there one that Stands out the most to you? Do you think that that last well, for, year for twelve five twelve five zero twelve five upsets yeah, last so year, which last is a rarity? Year, last year, none of them, none of the twelves even covered last year in the five twelves. Drake was the one who had the best opportunity, got destroyed the last six minutes of the game. Miami went on a night eighteen to one run, won that game outright in route to making it to the final four of what it looked like they might be dead in round one. Uh, look, I advance McNeese. We'll get to another twelve later. That I advanced as well. I picked the twelve. I picked the twelve at today's draft. Even though I don't love them, I would give them a shot in their matchup. Uh, but look, it's uh, I. This McNeese team is really good. They are really good, and this I don't think this is a great matchup for a weaker Gonzaga team than we've seen. To answer your question, Matt, I don't even really look at the matchup or the seed number. I just literally put my power ratings and what I have for those two and. And who I think is better. Well, that's the beauty of on. that's the beauty of doing what you do, and you 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 take the emotion out of it. That's something that I uh, definitely struggle with. K- so K- did it go into yours? Are you looking for twelves? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. KU and Sanford, the other game in this pod. This is the late night game on Thursday in Salt Lake. KU, of course, uh, most losses ever under Bill Self with ten worst seed ever in the Big Twelve tournament, any era for KU. Uh, they lose that first game to Cincinnati. Of course, Kevin McCuller didn't play in that game. Neither did Hunter Dickinson, both nursing injuries. McCuller's been nursing his injury for the better portion of a month now. Yes. Dickinson hurt himself in the Houston game. Sanford, the champions of the SOCON. Uh, we have seen great SOCON moments in the past. Furman, of course, last year upset Virginia in that wild finish a year ago. Chattanooga was also close to beating Illinois two years ago and covered the number pretty easily in that one. They were both 13 seeds. Here you are again with Bucky McMillan and the Sanford Bulldogs. Seven and a half, the opening number here. I expect Dickinson and McCuller to play, and I think this is a horrendous matchup for Sanford. I think the way that Sanford plays, you if you want to beat Kansas, you have to be a team that just – if they drew McNeese, if it happened to be KU McNeese in the second round, I probably would be, bet McNeese in that game. Not only just on the spread, I'd probably bet him outright against Kansas. For Sanford – they play too fast. They're not good enough on defense. And I just think this is a beautiful matchup for KU, even with the guys not 100% healthy. As long as they both play and are about 85%, this feels like a Kansas win. I don't think I can get there laying the seven and a half, but talk to me in two days. Yeah, it's, the, the injury situation is, is cloudy. I mean, we're basically assuming that everyone's going to be good to go for Kansas. I would Kansas. be surprised if they it's, it's Dickinson is really the one that I'm looking at. If yeah. he's good to go, uh, I, I push Kansas past Sanford. But this Bulldogs team is live. They run the 12th fastest pace in the country. Uh, they are seventh in effective field goal percentage. They're eighth in the country in three-point percentage. Problem is, is they are really bad at crashing the glass, especially on the defensive end. 313th in defensive rebounding in the country, and this is against a Kansas team that is really built from the inside out, especially with with Hunter Dickinson. They take a lot of uh, shots from close proximity, more so than other. If you look at the shot chart, they are basically around the rim or from beyond the arc. No mid-ranges whatsoever for this uh, Bill Self-coached Kansas team. And he's one of those coaches, like Tom Izzo, Patino, if he's in the tournament, that you kind of have to handicap that in there a little bit. I mean, the coaching is worth, in my eyes in this matchup, I'll say a half a point, you know, nothing crazy as far as a handicap goes, but... Uh, Bill Self is a team, is a guy that knows what it takes to win this time of year against an inferior opponent. Let's just call it like it is. Not saying Sanford can't win the game. Kansas is better on paper. They are the favorite. I don't know about the number. If if I'm going to bet this game, and Alex and I will talk a little bit more about the specific matchups in this opening round tomorrow on Sports by the Book, but I'm looking at the total in this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, 153 right now at at most places, open a little bit lower than that. So it's being bet up. I mean, you're talking about two top 100 tempos. Even Kansas runs the 93rd top tempo in the country so two teams that like to run a gun uh and especially a Kansas team that likes to score quick 
in the shot clock. They score early in the shot clock more than a lot of teams. They score inside, and then Sanford runs, 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 runs. Uh, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't really have a huge lean as far as the spread number. I put Kansas past Sanford in the uh, bracket, but if I'm going to bet this game, then I'll have some more numbers on it tomorrow, but I'm looking for the total over. I think we missed the best of it, opening at 150. I don't. I wouldn't go too much higher than this, but you're right. They both do like to play really fast. I would look at the dog here and the points, but we talked about this yesterday, and I had already said my line would be about five on Kansas if both of them were playing, and if they were out, then it would almost lean to Samford being a small favorite here or even pick them. So, yeah, I think that seven and a half is enough points, and, and they can hang around in this one, especially, I mean – I know we're saying they're both playing, but like you said, Jeff, McCullers has been in and out of their lineup for the last month at least. And then now with Dickinson, and you mentioned it, how important he is for them, especially under the basket. So I think that you're okay grabbing the points here. I even, I'm still questionable on what to do with them because I think we're just expecting Kansas to turn into the Kansas Jayhawks that we know and to just move through this bracket. And I don't, I don't think that's going to happen again this year. Let's go to the bottom half, a matchup that I'm not really that intrigued by. The 6'11", Oregon, bid stealers, sorry, Jerry, out of the uh, out of the Pac-12 will take on South Carolina, a team I was very much looking to fade in their first-round matchup. I can't do it here because I don't like Oregon. Now, granted, Dana Altman, we haven't seen him in the tournament in a few years, but Dana Altman, we know, great NCAA tournament coach. Uh, did it at Creighton, did it at at, uh, at Oregon as well, like made a Final Four a few years ago. Uh, it's one, Matt Neverett, 133 to total on this. I, I stayed out uh, completely here. If you made me, if as of course, your bracket makes you pick a winner yep, of yep. all these games, I did advance the Gamecocks, but no real confidence in that. I did too, and then I saw a number actually right before we took the air that made me uh, hesitate a bit. Dana Altman uh, seven times he's taken Oregon to the tournament uh-huh. previously. Seven and zero in round one, right? He has won a first round game yeah. in every wow. single one of those. Although, if I had Te- to- technically that right game against Iowa was round two, but hey, they still won that first game. If I were to bet it right now, I'm looking at the Gamecocks, especially because I have another 11 seed in New Mexico that I'm really, really high on. Um, <laughs> me and just about everybody else in the country. That's no, not a not not breaking news. Uh, their favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's interesting. Oregon ran their way through the Pac-12 tournament by slowing the games down and just kind of out executing everybody in the uh, the the waning days of, of the Pac-12. I think this one's going to come down to who wins the battle at the rim, both on the rebounding battle and uh, you know being able to get close proximity for their shots. Neither of these teams really sharp shooting by any stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah, this is just a weird matchup. I I, I like Lamont Paris. I think he is going to be top three finalist for Coach of the Year nationally. This is a South Carolina team that had their best SEC record in, in, in quite some time. This is just another one. That, that's weird. I, I don't really have a great feel for this one. But again, the bracket makes you advance somebody. I advance the Cox. I actually put him past Creighton in the next round, too. Wow. I'm with you guys on this game. I, I would not really – I would not want to bet it. I made it pick them. I did pick Oregon to actually – up or beat South Carolina mm-hmm. in this um, mm-hmm. only because they are playing so much better and they're getting healthy and you saw that in the Pac-12 tournament. So I think that they could win this first one against South Carolina. 314 in this quadrant. Creighton, one of th- only three Big East teams to make the dance. Different discussion for a different time, Jeff. Akron, the 14 seed in this one, champions of the MAC. Uh, so... Creighton's 12 and a half, 141. Alex and I are much higher than, on Creighton than Matt is because Matt has decided they are not any good because they're too jump shot reliant, as he said earlier in the day. Uh, I will say, though, <laughs> I will say, this was the region for Creighton backers, national champion backers, people who had uh, Final Four futures on them. You wanted to get drawn with Purdue, and they got drawn with Purdue. Mm-hmm. Now it's just a, be- a matter of, all right, handle your business in the first two rounds. I thought they got the perfect 6-11 and 11 matchup. Two teams, they're much better than. And then get by Tennessee, which will be a very difficult game for them. But if they get by Tennessee, Creighton I have in the final. Actually, forget the final four. I have them in the national championship wow. game when it's all said and done. Uh, but this is, I, they are jump shot reliant. They are much better at home. They're much better at home in Omaha as opposed to away from it. But I thought they got a perfect draw. They have one game where it's like, okay, are they capable of beating Tennessee? I don't know, but I'll take Rick Barnes' history as a positive for me 
in Creighton. I am going to bet Creighton to win this region also as well. Before wow. we get Matt's, because he's on the other side, I completely agree with you. I have them going to the Final Four as well. And I haven't been, been that high on Creighton at all this year, but they have just crept up on my power ratings. Mm-hmm. Now they are in about the top seven. So I do think that they got very lucky with this draw. I have them beating Tennessee and, and making it to the Final Four as well. I've got a number for you, but I want to ask a question about your, your power rankings before that. You said you had Creighton at seven. Just out of curiosity, because Creighton and Marquette are, are two of the teams that have been rated vastly differently, depending on who you ask. Where do you have Mar- Marquette right now in your ratings? If okay, you have let me pull that up. Right in front of you. Because Marquette, yeah. for some people, had them all the way up to like fourth. So, so why Alex is looking that up, I, I think Marquette is vastly overrated. I do as well. That's, that's kind of why I, I'm so, asking. So, yeah. so I, I have, look, UConn's the best team in the country. Marquette, I had vastly overrated. The way that I had them all rated, I thought Marquette should have been a three. Yeah, but they had too many non-con. Like they won in Illinois, they got to the Bowie final. Like they had so many wins. Where did you add them out? So I actually I gave Creighton a little too much credit. I have them at nine right now, but very close. Just a uh, one point in between them and Purdue and Illinois, and then I have Marquette down at thirteen. Okay, so that's you have more Creighton appropriate ahead. from at what least, I've seen. Yeah, at least two two and a half points higher. But than the number Marquette. on on Creighton's first game that I'm going to be looking at, Akron allowed one team in the regular season, non-con or otherwise to hit 10 plus threes on 40% shooting. Creighton has accomplished that 10 times this year. So it's a top five three-point defense versus okay. one of the best jump shooting teams in the country. This is strength on strength in this first one, um, but I like Creighton. I like Creighton to cover the number in the first game. I, I think they <laughs> they beat the Zips. I think they beat okay. Akron. Uh, I, I think that they struggle later in the tournament when teams are able to kind of minimize their effect from deep. This first matchup, though, against Akron, I think is a no-brainer. Give me the Blue Jays all day. We'll skip uh, – well, actually, we won't skip Texas because Texas will play the winner of Virginia and Colorado State. I don't want to take too much time on this game. Uh, Virginia <laughs> shouldn't be here. It's your favorite game. But – oh, yes. Very very good, Alex. Uh, they shouldn't be here. It's a joke that they're in this field, but guess what? They're here, so we get the bet on this. Colorado State's up to two behind us, which is actually market low. There's a bunch of threes out there now on this game. Mm. Total's comically low at 120, which makes sense because Virginia's there. Uh, I'm not willing to lay Colorado State. As much as I despise this Virginia team, if Isaiah Stevens is not 100%, Colorado State is going to have a hard time beating anyone of even remote close to NCAA tournament quality. Stevens got hurt at the end of that Nevada game, was not not even close to 100% against New Mexico, and it showed with how poorly the Rams played in that semifinal. If he's healthy, whole different ballgame. We'll bet Colorado State then. But if he's not healthy, I can't do anything. Here. Yeah, the health of Stevens is going to be the, the key point in this game. One of the numbers that I was looking at for this one, though, Jeff, would normally it, it is agreed upon, typically across the board, that free throw shooting and coaching have a really strong correlation. Am I, am I wrong? No. It's no. normally the, the correlation. Would you no. believe if I told you that this Tony Bennett coach Virginia team is 355th in the country in free throw percentage. Well, if you yeah. well if you watched them, uh, you watched them not salt away games in conference yeah. play. If you watched them keep Boston College around into that overtime, still mad Boston College didn't cover that game. Yeah, uh, but no, hey, look, this is this Virginia team. Real quick, offensively speaking, we talked that their defense is still high quality. And look, under Bennett, they're going to be high quality. top five in the country right they're, now. They're seven right now uh, on Ken Palm. They don't turn the ball over on offense, but they have so many possessions that ended horrible shots that they might as well be turnovers. Yeah, They are horrible on offense. The only things they're okay with are turnover percentage. That's it. They're okay at turnover percentage. They actually shoot the three ball okay. But I, I, it's ridiculous that they're in this game uh, when it's all said. No, well, the, really is. the reason I bring up the free throw shooting is because I think this one's going to be close. It's agreed upon market-wide it will be. that it's yeah. going to be low scoring. It's going to be a low scoring yeah. close game. I think it's going to come down to the free throws. Give me the better free throw shooting team. You mentioned the turnovers for Virginia. They limit those. They're the fifth best team in the country at preventing turnovers. Colorado State top 50 in that category as well. So they really take care of the ball, a la Isaiah Stevens. That's what he does best. It's two teams within the bottom 100 in terms of pace. So not a lot of possessions either. So I think this one's going to be close. I will take the better free throw shooting team in a game that is 50-50 in a lot of other uh, you know areas. And I'll, I'll take the Rams. I actually move the Rams over Texas in the next round as well. No problem with that. Yeah. Uh, past me, I made this game a pick 'em. I already told Jeff I was going to take Virginia here, and he uh, 
talked me out of it. So we're just going to skip this game because. <laughs> Take Virginia. Don't listen to me. Trust your gut on these. Hey, the, if Stevens is hurt, uh, if Stevens isn't healthy, Virginia probably will win this game. I agree. Just to annoy me. I actually do agree with that. Keep well, an eye on the health is, of Isaiah it Stevens. A, it is a calf, right? So how quickly can yeah. can that heal up for this first game? But I'm just saying there's there's a lot better games to. Much. <laughs> to but this is on. the first. This is the second game of the tournament because it's Tuesday night in. Yeah, Dayton. so have a little action. Around. Tennessee's 21 against St. Peter's. So we can be quick here. We yeah. all advance. Tennessee. Yes. Uh, this is a team that is very well put together to make a deep run. Mm-hmm. The history of Rick Barnes in the tournament is very poor, as we know. Last 18 tournament games that Rick Barnes has coached, he's 3-15 and 15 against the number. They made it to the Sweet 16 a year ago and then were stomped by FAU as a favorite. Uh, they, they are very unreliable historically. Now I think this team is different. Dalton Connect gives them something they've never had at Tennessee a primo number one scorer who can be relied upon in any situation. Uh, St. Peter's is not good as anywhere near as good as they were two years ago when they made the Elite Eight. Out of nowhere is the 15 seed. Uh, if lightning strikes again, it would be a humongous shocker. And they're 15 to 1 on the money line for that exact reason. Yeah. I'm going to have to put you um, to work when you're looking at your random trends you find. But look yeah. for something that says if a team loses in the first game of their conference tournament, I don't think there's been any that have actually won the NCAA tournament. That, that, that's, that's, that, that's, up, that's, that's, that's correct. Let me know. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. That That is that is correct, at least in the and last 20 years. we did see Tennessee lose to Mississippi State in that first game. So, so I'm, look, I am fading. I'm not, I don't have them going too far. Look, looking at this region, we kind of, you and I already talked about it as a whole. Alex and I are on Creighton to get out of this region right now behind us. Here at the South Point, Midwest region, 4-1 to one on Creighton to win said region. Purdue's the favorite at plus 150 right now. Tennessee's 3-1. to one. Uh, Creighton four to one, Gonzaga eight to one. Everyone else is double digits. Kansas comes in fifth, fifth at twelve to one. Matt Neverett, who's your pick out of this region? My pick out of this region is a team that we just talked about. I got Tennessee. Tennessee. I got Tennessee. They're they're too good on defense. Um, they're a well built team that is a little bit older. They've been together a couple of years, which is not always the case in today's college basketball. We we talked about Purdue. We talked about Gonzaga. Uh, I, do, I don't trust Creighton until I see it uh, this year. I'll, I, if, if I get burned by Creighton, so be it, just because of the unique style that they play. It's a little bit different, more of a true NBA style uh, than a lot of other teams in, in college basketball. But I've got Tennessee uh, actually over Gonzaga in an Elite Eight matchup to go to the Final Four. I have Creighton over Gonzaga. so And he doesn't <laughs> like Gonzaga. <laughs> Creighton over McNeese. Wow. Let's get crazy in that region. Uh, yeah, I, that's honestly sole, sole purpose. I, in these bracket pools, you got to – Take some chances to pick off some extra points that you may not. Yep. I have a hard time seeing McNeese being able to beat Purdue, but it feels like everyone will have Purdue back actually this go around. Yep. And I don't like Gonzaga. Oh, I have McNeese as the Elite Eight, as ridiculous as that may sound right now. All right, let's go to the top of the right side. Uh, we'll we'll go a little quicker on these games so we can at least get all of our Final Four yeah. plays out by uh, about 15 past the hour here. Uh, G- uh, Houston, number one overall, a uh, number one seed in the South. They take on Longwood, who was under 500 in the Big South. It's crazy. Uh, 24 behind us right now on this. Houston, uh, the number one seed, 127. No play in this round, even though I will say, though, if you're ever going to lay the lumber with Houston, this feels like the spot to do it. These Big South teams are his, other than Winthrop. When Winthrop would get there, these Big South teams are historically awful against the number in round one. Yes, there have been times where it happened. UNC Asheville's a 16, almost beat Syracuse about a decade ago. Uh, But Longwood, last time in the tournament two years ago, got annihilated by Tennessee. And they were a pretty popular underdog selection in that in the 314 Houston, and especially, Alex, you mentioned it earlier today, Houston got clocked the last time out. Yeah. It would not shock me if Houston wins this game like 75-38. to 38. That sounds Would not right. shock me all at all if that happens. And this is a Houston team that when they really want to, they can turn it on offensively. It is at the behest of a little bit of defense, but against a team yeah. like Longwood where they have the, the physical advantage, they've got the size advantage. Uh, don't forget, this Houston team had won... I'm trying to count how many wins in a row this is. Before that loss against Iowa State, they had won like 10, 11 games in a row. They were really, really hot. They had put up 82 against Texas, 82 against Baylor, 87 against Oklahoma, 82 against Texas Tech. 
Uh, when, when they really want to, they are really able to turn it on. A team like Jackson State that they played early in the non-con at 89. They, so when they want to, they can turn it on against these inferior opponents. Yeah, I think Houston plays whatever number, wins whatever number you can imagine. I think that they crush Longwood. The next matchup is pretty interesting. Uh, Nebraska and Texas A and M. I'm, I'm on Nebraska right now, but I I worry if I can trust them uh, closing out this game. I don't like A and M. I, I I get why they made the field. They had a lot of quality wins. They had a lot of losses too. I if they had been left out, I wouldn't have had a problem with it. Nebraska, <laughs> look, we've talked about it. They were one of the teams we talked about a lot on this show this year where they were amazing at Pinnacle Bank Arena in Lincoln. They were not so amazing away from it. Uh, Tominaga is one of the most fun players to watch in college basketball. They've never won a tournament game, Nebraska. Ever? Never. They've never won one. one one I think they are, at this point, the only Power Five not to have won an NCAA tournament game. I have to double-check that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Matt Neverett, Alex White, it's finally the Huskers' time. I like them. I think a short money line price on Nebraska is fine here. I think they will get annihilated by Houston in the next round. Mm-hmm. But for this individual game, I do like the Huskers. I I just can't bet on them or pick them when they're not playing in Lincoln. From what we've seen that, this year, that's it is fair. just a, such a sharp contrast. And against the team in Texas A&M that they are rated very similarly against on Ken Palm in both offensive and defensive efficiency. Uh, really not too much separating these teams. More of a fade of the Huskers, but I'm going with the Aggies here. I'm with Nebraska, and I think that number's just right. So, I mean, these games are really going to come down to it. It's pick them. I would go with Nebraska and lay in those points, too. Five seed, Wisconsin takes on James Madison. So, James Madison plays the team from Madison in this one in Brooklyn. Up to five and a half on this one now. And, Alex, we talked about this yesterday after the bracket was revealed. It was four and a half here. And I said, if this thing gets to five, I'm taking the Dukes. Now that we're at five and a half, I'm definitely taking the Dukes. Now... Wisconsin, the last few times out, started to look like the Wisconsin team we saw before the wheels came off at the beginning of February. With that said, James Madison won in East Lansing this year. James Madison's on the longest win streak in the country going into this game. They won a Sun Belt that was actually quite good this year. Matt Neverett's alma mater almost won the regular season, actually. They did win the regular season. Appalachian State was actually my pick to win that conference. Yeah. Got upset at the buzzer by Arkansas State. And then James Madison annihilated the Red Wolves in the yeah. final of that league. Uh, I think they're worth a sprinkle. Worth a sprinkle very much. I did inv- advance the Dukes of James Madison in my bracket in your pesky 12 over 5 but that we got none of a year ago. Yeah, no, I'm on the Dukes. I'm on the Dukes. Their last loss was to App State. They've beaten just about everybody in the country not named App State. They lost twice to the yeah. Mountaineers. Lost to them in football as well. Kind of throw that in there. Uh, but this one is such a sharp contrast of styles. Wisconsin, 312th in tempo. James Madison, 62nd. The Dukes, second in three-point defense in the country. And Wisconsin, 346th. Yeah, really bad defending the perimeter. And the Dukes also are 33rd in three-point shooting. Wisconsin, 129th in three-point shooting. So give me the Dukes. I think that they are able to make enough three-pointers to build a lead. Wisconsin doesn't play at a fast enough pace to come back. I I like James Madison advancing. Just the one win for him, though. Maybe my number's not high enough on James Madison, but I had this number at six and a half Mm -hmm. with the Badgers. So nothing here for me. It's not enough to want to lay that with Wisconsin, but I do have them moving on in this round. Duke and Vermont up next. Alex, we talked about this yesterday. I think this is a horrible matchup for Vermont. Uh, 11 and a half, or yeah, 11 and a half behind us. It's up to 12 in some shops. Uh, look, Vermont last year, they were a team a lot of people bet as a 15 seed against Marquette. I thought it was the same deal. I thought it was a horrible matchup for him, and Marquette drilled him. Same sort of deal here. Duke's not playing well. I'll give him that. They lost their last two. They lost to North Carolina. They lost to NC State before and at the beginning of NC State's miraculous run to the ACC title. But Vermont just does not have the dudes inside to guard these guys. And when it's all said and done, this game, yes, it's in Brooklyn. There will be plenty of people who make the trip from Burlington about four and a half, five hours down to Brooklyn. But Duke always draws when they play in New York. Drive they everywhere. always do. And this feels like one of those where Duke gets their act together and they really put it on a team that is a nice team but has just doesn't have the talent or the personnel to match up with a team like Duke. Yeah, it's weird. I got a couple of numbers for you guys on this one. Vermont, 301st in the country in size. Duke is 10th. Yeah, so they go. got the advantage. 
The weird anomaly, though, for the Catamounts is that they are eighth in the country in defensive rebounding. So they position themselves well, even though they are in the Mm -hmm. bottom 60 teams in terms of size. They are 345th on the offensive glass. They're good at boxing out, but they're not good at getting second chance. Yeah, and so my, my, my thought tells me that they are taking advantage of inside a lot, and they basically are reserved to the outside, where Duke may even have the advantage there. Yeah, give me the Blue Devils. Give me whatever number you can find on them. Yes, I'm with you. Duke advances here, and I, I think it's by a lot, and uh, they really turn it on, especially after those two losses. But, I mean, the big number for me, Vermont, 161 in uh, adjusted offensive efficiency. So I don't expect them uh, getting too much going here. Yeah, I, this is – Duke could not have done better with the 13 seed oh, yeah. draws. It's just a perfect draw for them. And the Catamounts, again, look, we've seen them as a 13 seed. Hello, TJ Sorrentine back in the day against Syracuse. But – yeah, a little bit different this go around. All right, Texas Tech takes on the miracle workers of NC State in the six versus eleven matchup. Uh, I will be very fast here. The road ends now. Am I comfortable laying Texas Tech in this game? Not necessarily. There are some matchup issues that I, I I'm concerned uh, about how they match up with DJ Burns. Uh, I am also ma- concerned how they match up a little bit with Horn. But in the end, here it is so hard to expect NC State. Yes, it's a few days off, but it's still a pretty quick turnaround, all things considered, when you go 5-5 five and five against pretty reasonable competition. They'd beat the 1, 2, and 3 seeds in the ACC tournament to win the conference tournament. It's 5. It's a lean to Texas Tech. I'm not strong enough to lay it, and I didn't hesitate in advancing the Red Raiders in my bracket. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. I think that uh, for a team like NC State or for, you know, in a different region, different kind of situation, but Long Beach State... These teams that make the unexpected run to their conference tournaments, especially the conference tournaments where they got to play three, four, five games in as many days, the worst possible thing for these teams is these tournaments ending because they got all the momentum, they got all the good vibes, they get all the you know feelings of day to day showing up, playing for the guy next to you, and you know different motivations throughout these these tournaments, and then that ends. You get a week and a half off. You got to travel. You got to play opponents that you may or may not have ever even seen before. Um, so, yeah, I, I think for a team like NC State, the worst possible thing that could have happened was that ACC tournament coming to a close. So, yeah, I got the Red Raiders advancing. Not far, but advancing. That is a great point, Matt. A lot of times people don't want that off week or the bye week because their uh, momentum is going, and, and that's true for NC State here. I do think Texas Tech wins, but I don't really mind that number. I mean, yeah, I don't mind that number. I made them a three-point favorite. So if it moves anymore, I will definitely be grabbing five and a half or six on NC State. And you got to give it up for DJ Burns because he has been fantastic, or, or he was fantastic in that ACC tournament. He's going to be cat- Cadillac 2.0, going back to the uh, and one street ball days. So, DJ, we saw Burns in the NCAA tournament with Winthrop a few years ago as well. I had no clue. I, I, I had forgotten that, but it was mentioned <laughs> on the broadcast like three times. I was like, oh, yeah, they did have they, – because that Winthrop team was a, – a, a, a lot of people picked them to beat Villanova, and Villanova yeah. really had their way with them in that round of uh, 64 game two years ago. Our, yeah, it was around the 64 game. All right, let's keep it moving here. Kentucky. 13 and a half against Oakland, 163 and a half the total. We talked about this yesterday with the total, Alex. I thought anything uh, that came less than 165 is okay here. It has been bet up. Uh, on the side here, advanced Kentucky in the bracket pretty easily, but there's just so hard with the way that they, they struggle on the defensive end to lay any sort of points with them, and this is a stay off on the side. Kentucky will advance. They've had problems in March over the last few years, but I think this is a march where they get themselves right. Right, and Oakland, very good at shooting the threes as well, so I think that's why that total is moving up here, and um, I think they have a chance to hang around. I agree with you. I think that number is a little bit too high. I would only take the points here with Oakland, but I do have Kentucky moving on. As far as a bet, I'm only going to look to play the over because I think that this uh, the, the spread is a little rich, but, I mean, you're talking Kentucky, the number one three-point shooting team by percentage, number five total offense in Ken Palm, number four, Ineffective field goal shooting. I don't think they have any problem with the Golden Bears. The interesting thing here is is the uh, the Golden Grizz. Sorry, ah, correct there, but you're close. Ah. The Golden Grizzlies. Uh, they are very. They are slow on offense, but they want you to play fast when they are on defense. That, that plays into Kentucky's plays mo. Right yeah, what Kentucky wants to do. So I, I think this is this is going to be a higher scoring game. And like you are right, Oakland shoots the three ball pretty darn well. So they have the ability to stay in it. I just don't think they have enough in order to pull the full-on shocker. 10-7 here. Uh, look, uh, Boise will play Colorado. Colorado's favorite in that game. 
in the play-in on Wednesday. Uh, Colorado at the moment is two and a half point favorites. Winner that will get Florida. Uh, I have no bet on the playing game. Uh, I, I, if anything, I'd actually bet Boise. Yikes! Uh, but Florida, I expect even with the injury to the big guy yesterday who broke his leg in the SEC and final. Some, geez. I think Florida runs the winner of this playing game pretty easily and sets up what would be a very interesting matchup against Marquette in a 7-2 uh, there, Alex. I actually have Colorado beating Boise State in, in my bracket as of right now. I have them moving on and beating Florida. So okay. I haven't made any numbers yet for those two against Florida, but just uh, looking at it, I don't really trust Florida that much. They've been pretty inconsistent all year, even though they do play in a tough um, conference there. But yeah. Florida's a tough matchup. I mean, nobody wants to see the Gators right now. They're fourth in the country in terms of total size, and they were on the 20th fastest tempo. They're big. They're fast. They're strong. They lose a little bit of depth with the big man breaking the leg. But, uh, yeah, that's a bad matchup for just about anybody, and I don't think Boise State or Colorado has seen a team with this kind of speed and, speed and size all year. I got the Gators over whoever wins that play-in game. Do you have any uh, feel for that play-in game? You it's tough. Boise pretty well. I've seen both of these teams in person between Boise State and Colorado. Uh, Colorado's probably got a size advantage in my in my eyes. And uh, just looking at the numbers, they they do. They're the 25th biggest team in the country. Not by much. Boise State, the 33rd. If Max Rice can have a big game shooting, I think they win. Because Tyson Dagenhart, I think, will get neutralized down low by the couple of big men that Colorado rolls in a, in a rotation. So at Boise, maybe a little bias. Just a little bit of a lean. But again, I think Florida runs whoever wins that game out of the gym in the next game. Marquette will take on Western Kentucky, 215 in this region. 14-point line, Marquette favored, 158 and a half. All right. In the, uh, in the draft we did earlier today, I thought the 15 seed I wanted was Western Kentucky. Didn't end up working out that way because I was required to take Long Beach State in the way that it ended up. Team of destiny. Yeah, team of destiny indeed. <laughs> the <tangent> baby. <laughs> I, 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 I'm a little bold here. I actually am going to take a very small, small, small sprinkle on Western Kentucky money line here. They're, I'm going to definitely take the 14 that's available out yeah. there. Now, Marquette, this game could very easily get away from me quickly because Marquette could turn them over like crazy and then see you later. But this is an absurd pace game we're getting here. Yep. Where both of these teams are very, very happy to run Western Kentucky's the fastest pace team in the country. Marquette gets Kolick back, but I'm very curious to see how that works. And it's not a great time to be welcoming in a, not only, yes, it is great to have your your best player back, but a primary ball handler when he's been out for multiple weeks, coming back into the fold, there could be a, a, a little bit of, a, a, a little bit of things that aren't necessarily perfect. And I would not be shocked if Western Kentucky stays in this game. I'll take the smallest of bites on the money line. I wish I was getting a little more than 750. Uh, but 14, very happy to take it with the toppers here. I expect this game to be played within single digits. I agree. I agree. And I actually did advance Western Kentucky just the one game in my bracket. There we go. He did it. Mostly, <laughs> partially because I do think that it is a unique matchup and they're a really tough team to play because of that pace. They run the, the go-go basketball style of, of offense. But also, just, you know, when you do your bracket, I kind of went through and just did an initial feel one. No numbers, no research. What I thought was going to happen and by the time I got to that matchup, I realized that I didn't have a lot of upsets. So <laughs> I think that there is going to be, if there is going to be, I, I was going to say a, a 15 that beats a two, I think it is this matchup because Marquette out of the four two seeds has the, uh, the, the least strong identity. You're talking Iowa State stifling defensively. Tennessee, same deal, plus they're a little bit offensively than, than Tennessee. And then Arizona, really, really good offensively. Marquette, what is their thing? That, that, that's my thing is, you know, they're, they're strong generally across the board. They're not great on the boards. They really don't rebound well. And I think in a game with a lot of possessions, that rebounding advantage could, or disadvantage, I should say, could come back to haunt them, uh, even though they have six defenders on the floor at any given time with Shaka Smart coming in on the corners defensively. The disrespect on the table here for Marquette. I'm, I'm going with Marquette in this one. The thing I love the most about them is we're talking about the pace and how both these teams play really fast. Well, Marquette forces the other team to slow it down, usually 19.1 average possession time when they are on defense. So they are very good defensively. They're 19th on Kempom. They're 18th offensively. So what their thing is, is consistent on both sides of the ball. And that's why I, I like Marquette to move forward and uh, to beat the next round, make it into uh, 
Sweet 16 the here. One, the one concern in this game, as I, as I did mention, where Marquette could win this game by 25 points. If Western Kentucky could turn the ball over 25 times. Mm-hmm. That very easily could happen. And you mentioned it. Look, Marquette's, right? we've known Chaka Smart since the VCU days. They keep track of how many deflections they have at all times. So it would not shock me if this is a high turnover game for Western Kentucky. And that's how that's how you would get the better of Matt and I on that for sure, where Marquette could beat them by could beat them 85-60. Wouldn't shock me. Marquette has four losses since January fifteenth, uh, and yeah. three of them are to Connecticut. Yep. One of them in the championship game, wow. and the other one is Creighton. Creighton. Yeah, no, look, they've <laughs> they've handled the Big East, and, and that's part of the reason that the Big East was only with three. And I will say too, just on a closing number, that with uh, Western Kentucky with the number one pace in the country, yes, seventy fourth in uh, turnover percentage. So they actually do a pretty they've good done, job. They've done a good job of holding onto the ball and not turning it over. You know, you would assume a team with the number one. Uh, pace in the country, all those possessions would turn it over more, but they they don't really. Seventy fourth again. Final four for way we way this bracket breaks down for me. I do have James Madison making it to the second weekend. I have them upsetting Duke in my wow. bracket. I have Florida taking out Marquette as well. Uh, but then we end up with the two highest remaining seeds in the Elite Eight, and Kentucky gets the better of Houston, and the Wildcats make it to the Final Four to set up an all blue right side for me of three seeds with Creighton and Kentucky. I am on Kentucky as well. I got Kentucky over Duke. In the Elite Eight, in my initial bracket, I also have my only futures bet is on Kentucky. I know you've got a bet, Jeff, on yeah, the, the Wildcats as well. They we're rolling into the tournament with that. What sure. number did you get, by the way? So I had I have an 18, but I also, Same. But I also thank you, Arizona, here. FanDuel put up a rogue 35 to 1 deep into the season. Oh, no. And I was like, all right, well, I guess, uh, I guess I'll drive the 45 minutes to the border. I hop across the dam. And, and come right back. Wow. So I, was, I, have, I, have, uh, I, I had a very small amount of money in my FanDuel account. I put it on it, so we'll see how it, it goes. It pays to shop around. Yeah. So my final, um, my final four in this is Houston. I do yep. think they are going to make it, and I have Houston and Marquette playing in the Elite Eight to get there. So I – I have Kentucky going to the Sweet 16, but that's where I have them stopping. And I know they could go all the way, but we know the variance with them, right? And so, since we're uh, since we're over time here, and I don't want to don't want to keep our crew that's worked very very hard today, uh, that more so than usual, yes, which is more, a lot, even, yeah, just a ton today. Uh, so I'll be quick here. I'll let you two go through the left side of the bracket tomorrow, but okay. at least on my end, uh, just individually matchups wise. Um, I have chalk by seeding for round one in the East, except I have Drake over Washington State, which is a seed upset, but not a betting upset. Yeah. So UConn, FAU, San Diego State, Auburn, BYU, Illinois, Drake, Iowa State, all advancing. So I have pure betting chalk in the round of 64 in the East, and then I have seed chalk into the Sweet 16. So UConn will play Auburn. Illinois will play Iowa State. UConn will beat Illinois en route to the Final Four. So the defending champs I have getting back there again. I almost took Iowa State out against Drake. I just couldn't couldn't bring myself fully uh, to do it. In the bottom of the bracket, uh, North Carolina is going to steamroll the uh, 16 seed in the play in uh, the play in 16. Whomsoever it doesn't is, doesn't matter which one. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Michigan State is awful, which means they're absolutely beating Mississippi State. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I I advanced them. St. Mary's and Grand Canyon was actually the second toughest game for me to pick in the entire tournament. What was number one? What was number one uh, for the toughest games? It was actually South Carolina and Oregon. Okay, fair. <laughs> so, uh, but. Because I this one was a little bit different stakes because I was going to advance the winner of this game to the Sweet 16. I just think it's, in the end, St. Mary's veteran leadership gets it done against Grand Canyon. I would be surprised if the Antelopes don't cover the number in this game, but St. Mary's should advance and win, and win outright and move on to the uh, second round. We talked about Alabama, how much I don't like them all year. I just can't, can't take Charleston outright. Charleston just not good enough on offense to beat Alabama outright. So we're on the tide. And then in the bottom, I advanced both Mountain West teams to the round of 32. I bet you did. Uh, New Mexico is a betting favorite as an 11 against Clemson. I like that. Nevada is a betting favorite against Dayton. I don't think Dayton deserved to be in the tournament. I know that a lot of people disagree with me on that. They did not beat anyone. They beat no one other than St. John's. That was Zero the wins win against teams in the tournament. Yeah, St. John's is their best win the whole season. I, I, I don't know why they're in, and I really don't know why they're a 7. So I, I, I Nevada who I ended up having as the number one rated team in the Mountain West by the end of the year, advanced them. 
Arizona, I don't think will cover, but they will beat Long Beach State a year after the debacle against Princeton in the round of 64. Um, Sweet 16, I have North Carolina against St. Mary's. I have Chalk on the bottom with Arizona and Baylor. I have Baylor beating Arizona, UNC beating St. Mary's and Baylor to give us two number ones wow. and two number threes in okay. the final four, and I will wait till Wednesday to reveal my champion. We'll go through our, our final four at least today. I mean, because this, like I mentioned earlier, the bracket that I went through and did last night into this morning, no research, no real numbers, just okay. kind of some, just kind of feel. Um, so it, it very well could change. I mean, I don't think it'll change drastically right. between now and when we come on the air tomorrow for Sports by the Book. There's probably some first round upsets that I will take that I wasn't necessarily on today. I t- did take a lot of chalk in the first round, so I'll go back, have to adjust that. But yeah, I think it's fair to go through our, our final four because I do have a good amount of chalk. Yeah, I got ten- Tennessee and Kentucky. An all SEC right side of the bracket. I've got UConn uh, over Iowa State in the East in the Elite Eight. So I got UConn again. I have Arizona upsetting North Carolina in the Elite Eight, and uh, I I actually have Arizona over Tennessee in my national championship as of now. Again, could change, but as of right now, based on feel, give me Arizona and Kentucky, and I got the Wildcats winning it all at least initially. I actually have UConn beating Iowa State as well, going to the Final Four. And then I have St. Mary's and Arizona, and Arizona beating St. Mary's. So I have St. Mary's taking out North Carolina early in the Sweet 16. All right. As of now. As As of now. now. Or for one bracket, because how many are you guys going to do? I'll have at least uh, three. I'll probably have two or three. Just going to have two or three hundred. Only one? One real one. Yeah. And one done with a coin flip. And that's it. That's what I do. Okay. Coin flip bracket just, we'll do, little, wow, look at you. Silver dollar. Look at you with the silver dollar. Why is that just sitting in your pocket? I literally found this about five minutes into the show. It was sitting in my pocket. I was like, what is what that? Is so I pulled it out earlier. There. There's that's your coin a for the coin flip. That's thing to have in the, in the jacket. <laughs> no clue where it came from. You know actually where it came from, playing blackjack. Well, I, I figured it came from playing blackjack. I mean, that makes sense. I don't remember you when the last time I was. Blackjack in no recent. idea when the last time I played I blackjack know. in a suit was. David yeah. Copperfield over I don't know when I would have. Making, uh, making coin tricks. I don't know what I would have gotten a 50 cent piece otherwise, though. You should have acted like you, you know, you should have done a trick and grabbed it from behind my ear. Take, take a bite out of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alex and Matt are back tomorrow. Jim Rude will join them at, th- uh, at 310 tomorrow. Show goes from 3 to 4, roughly. And I'm back on Wednesday. We'll be gearing up for everything and then special times thursday through sunday we're 8 30 in the morning all four days an hour getting you ready for the games that are coming ahead that day and then we're back on a regular schedule on monday we're bad never and alex white i'm jeff parles good work in the corner by drew dog and jerry shout out earlier today to sean ryan and some guy named frank <laughs> Some guy named Uncle Frank. Frank. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, Frankie Overs, I think, is what we Frankie call Frankie Overs. At this point. We'll see you again tomorrow, 3 o'clock, right here, Sports by the Book.